everybody. Um, this is sort of a crappy, really crappy mini tutorial. Like, it's not going to be a full thing. It's just sort of like if you want to try drawing like I do, it's sort of a way to help you get started. I'm sorry about the recording quality. I tried to do it on my laptop with my tablet, but you know, it just gave me so many problems. I think my laptop hates my tablet, and you know, I hate that version of GIMP anyway. So, you know, it's just better for me to do it on here. I can't really see the recorder, so I hope the quality is alright. But, um, anyway, so, let's get started. Um, if you want the 17 sketch, all you have to do is comment or note me on DeviantArt. I can also provide you with the, uh, background, if you want it. Crappy as it is, obviously, I, uh, I could have done better, but... It was just going to get blurred anyway, so. So, if you're here, you've ob you've probably, not obviously, seen my 17 picture. Um, this one. And today's little tutorial will be to teach you how to get started on doing a project like this. So first thing you want to do is open the sketch. This is a PNG, no background version. I have a version with bangs and without bangs, but I'm going to be working with the one with bangs. So this is open for a later demonstration, but the first thing you want to do is create a new layer. And when creating layers, you always want to rename the layer so you know what's on that layer because trust me, it gets confusing. Something you also want to have a second, uh, no, a sixth sense in knowing is that you are working on the right layer because there is almost nothing as frustrating as getting some work done and you're like, hey, that looks good, and then you realize it, it was drawn on the wrong layer and you're just like <sighs> Anyway, you just, everybody makes mistakes, but you want to try and avoid that if you can. So you might, so you want to make a background layer so you can see what you're working on, so the transparent, the transparency doesn't set you off. I'm sorry. Um, I like to use white to start out with. You can use whatever color you want, although I would not suggest black, or anything too dark. Um, and once you have that done, and so you might want to rename this to sketch because background can get confusing too. But once you have that done. You will, well, I always start with the eyes, and I call them irises because if I name them eyes, I begin to think it refers to the lines that mark the eyes as opposed to what they actually are, which is the iris. Now, uh, cool, it's here. This is the picture. Oh, I hate the fact that my mouse does that. That we will be working from. It is. Sorry, there's something over here. Okay. It is a picture of 17 from the movie History of Trunks. As you can see, it's sunset in the picture, and the light is coming from over, well, his right, but our left, so I'm going to call it left. And, you know, you can see that, you know, I know it's anime and stuff. But the colors are a bit harsh. You know, they're just, I like to work with softer colors. You can work with whatever color you want, obviously, but I like something a little softer. Anyway, so I like to open the reference picture up so I have it and I can select colors from it. Now, as you can see, 17's eye is a bit of a sort of gray. Now, 
it comes up as that color in the green area and I don't like that like I like blue and I can't remember if his eyes are gray or blue I think they're like a grayish blue like a steel colored blue but I'm just gonna make them a bit bluer cuz you know freedom artistic freedom but so you want to have like an icy blue but not too dark but that right there should be about good so you want to color in on your iris layer by the way there are probably easier ways to do everything I'm about to do but I either don't know them or you know just don't want to mess around with that so then I like to make the pupils so I get an idea of where he's looking now uh, I have trouble with pupils sometimes so bear with me yeah that's good and so I'm just gonna duplicate that layer as opposed to try and make a circle the exact same size and everything and I'm just gonna do that real quick so I have some sort of measure of what line it's supposed to be on oh and look it didn't work oh wait yeah it did um yeah that should be about good right yeah I'm not too picky anyway I just merge that down save if there are any um newbies out there you know what you might want to like new newbies and you don't know about this no well not newbies but like new to digital painting um the keyboard re will really help if you learn just you know to press control z if you make a mistake that's undo control s if you want to save you know as opposed to having to go edit undo every single time or file save you know you can just press control s or control z or you know any of the other commands listed up here anyway so after i do the pupils i like to do the shines now since the light is coming from this way in fact let's just do that first i like to create a layer for lights and you know, like where the light source is if I have one I'll just call that Sun and then I use light and shadow supernova change it to a more sunny color make it huge move it off the grid in the direction that it's supposed to be coming from press ok Ooh, wow look 17 came back up and now we have a sort of you know reference for where the lights coming from in case it gets hard keep that on top of everything so that it colors all of the layers anyway so back to the shines since the light is coming from there I'm just gonna use yellow a really bright yellow for right now I might come back and do it later later edit it later oh my god I need to learn to speak English and anyway, I'm gonna lower the opacity because the, the light isn't absolute it's just hitting the corner of his eye now if the lights coming from this way and there is no hair blocking this then the lights probably gonna hit him around here Ooh, I'm gonna move that on top of the sketch too because it would generally hit him like right about here but his lashes would be in the way so he, later on we might want to color something like that to cover it up but and then here too but uh again his hair is in the way so that's probably going to get edited out and then use a brighter color like white to mark where the light is strongest and then that'll do for right now I think I had a different shine area in the original picture where is it where is it oh right about 
about the same place. Just a little less uh, big. I made it small. I have a history of making too big a shine, so I'm trying to work on that. Anyway, so the next thing I like to do is create a layer for the skin. Because for me, that'll be my bottom layer for 17 himself. I'm going to draw all of his clothes and everything on top of that. And so, oops, I already have it open. As you can see, in this picture, most of 17's face from this particular strand on is colored dark. And, you know, they're animators. They do what they can. But we're going to have ours a little bit more shaded. Now, I think a good base color would be, you know, here. Because flesh doesn't start out being white. I mean, it does look good on some anime, but we're trying to do a bit more realistic than typical anime. So, just color that on in. Doesn't really matter if you get over the sketch lines because the hair is just going to cover that anyway, so... And then, I'm going to make a new layer for the neck, because between his hair, the scarf, and the fact that his face is looking down, his neck's going to be particularly shaded. So, yeah, might as well just start doing that now. Move that underneath the skin layer. And so you just have that save again and now here move that layer above the sketch so that anything on the sketch you, you can color over and you know it won't interfere if you happen to start coloring like the shades and everything because as you can see the sketch is basic black and if you start adding like golden highlights it's gonna be like where is that string of black coming from? Oh yeah, it's coming from uh, underneath, I mean above the photo, so it's better to have it below. Anyway, as you can see, my sketch was a little, you know, nobody's head looks like that. So you can follow the lines if you want, but it's better if you take a little bit of artistic creativity, license, whatever you want to say. Just it is not necessary to color inside the lines right now. You just want to sort of get a feel of where his hair is sitting before you start doing any shading. Um, you might want to use a well I'm using a hard brush right now and it's sort of not a medium size it's actually kind of a small size but it's not itty bitty it's like the perfect size for coloring in where you want. Like, I know I could probably just select all around the hair and just fill it, but, you know, I like to draw it out. Call me crazy. Now, up here is where you might want to take the most sort of, you know, go off the grid because... As you can see, it's sort of rounded up here, but the fact of the matter is, his hair does part. So you want to sort of draw that part. And you want to try and get it sort of centered on the face, so... Part would actually be about there, probably. And this is obviously not good at all, so it's very uneven. What can I say? I'm a crappy sketcher. Anyway, so you'll notice that I left the ends undone. That's because you want to use a smaller brush for doing that, probably, if you don't want to have, you know, more work to do on down the line. Just sort of draw it out, make it fan, curtain in. Because his hair is sort of a curtain. And 
and then if you want, you can do this later or you can do this now, take the smudge tool, lower the opacity, I mean, not opacity, the rate, down to about 20, 15 at the lowest, but no more than 30. Change to a softer brush, change the size down to less than what you use to color in, but more than you use to draw the strands and pull the big color towards the small strands. You can color a little bit more if you want, but as you can see, it sort of gives the illusion that the hair is fanning out to its ends without having to draw each individual one and draw where it meets and everything. It's just a very lazy way to make the ends of the hair. But save that. Now if you'll notice the one of the biggest problems with my whole sketch is that 17 face it is sort of down. He's looking up under his lashes. Now his head doesn't really say that. Like if he's looking down, his head will not fan out at the sides like this. I made a mistake and drew his hair at the wrong angle. So I think the best way to combat that is to make a sort of egg shaped selection, put it at the top and sort of fan it out to where the hair is at the widest and then uh, maybe pull it in here a little bit. Select that invert and then just erase. Actually, you know what? Don't do that. Uh, Control Z. Oh, what are you doing? Where's the redo button? Oh, you won't let me redo. Okay. There we go. Uh, actually, what did I do? Well, anyway, you want his hair to pull in right here, but you don't want his head to look like an egg like I just did. I made a mistake. There. That's better. If you can accomplish that with a selection, more power to you, but... Uh, hair isn't perfect. Now, to avoid this confusion later on, I would highly suggest you select around the bangs, down here, and get rid of it. See, it's not looking great. Well, I was going to say it's not looking great yet, but there's no guarantee it'll ever look great. Oops, see, drew on the sketch layer. My bad. There's no guarantee it'll ever look great, but it'll look better than it does now. So make a new layer for bangs so you can get those things out of the way too. Now, when I first started out, as you can see, this the bangs that I sketched are shorter than his actual hair length. And as you can see, his hair on this side is a little bit more long than, okay, gotta fix that real quick before I forget to do it at all. Anyway, so as you can see, his bangs are a little bit shorter than the rest of his hair. I drew it that way because I thought I was going to make him shorter, but I realized that his entire hair is one length. It's like a bowl cut or something. So you just got to, um, what's that word? Uh, compromise, whatever. You just got to allow for the change. You can follow the same path, but no, smaller brush. So my heart, uh, pff, hardness, I have a soft, <laughs> I'm using a soft ed edged brush right now and the scale is at 10, well, 0.10. And 
and that's not the best I could do, but it's not terrible. Okay. Try to make sure that you get the bangs almost as long as his hair. And if not, there's a very simple way to work with it. Alright, that's probably pretty good. Now back to the actual hair level. Well, I'm going to say first. As you can see, his, uh, what do you call that? Hairline is still a little flat. So you want to do that again. Mark where it's supposed to, where it meets. And then you sort of want to draw little, you know, places where his hair would come in because in the reference, ugh, don't tell me I clicked out. Oh, I didn't. In the reference, you can see his hair comes up and over, but I've always had trouble doing that. I, it eludes me how to, so I would rather draw his hair flatter. You can do it whatever way you want, obviously, but I just prefer to draw his hairline flat. Make sure you're rounding the face because the face isn't a square, it's actually like an egg. Pulling at the edges. looking better but now I'm just gonna get rid of that entire part of the sketch oh control X also a good one it's cut oops don't want to do that all right I'll just do it the old-fashioned way just a race anyway so that's good for right now but now you're gonna want to draw his eyes on a different layer because you're gonna be doing more erasing and you don't want that to get lost I would suggest changing to a different color right now so you can see just how much you've actually drawn Don't worry about making it completely uh, smooth. That's what the uh, smudge tool is for. I'm a big smudger. You might notice that I started out drawing everything with a hard edged brush and now I'm using a soft edged brush. That's what I do. When I change a brush, unless it's causing me problems, I just stay there. I don't change back. Probably not the greatest uh, method, but that's what I do. Now, this does not need to be perfect. You just need a map of where everything is. And you might want to cut out the irises edge. So you have that for later. Cause I'm about to delete, mass delete. Put those two together. Maybe change the color. Now I used to use colorize to do this sort of thing but you know it's just so glaring sometimes so I've actually become more infatuated with the hue saturation tool which if you ask me does a much better job you can adjust the hue from your starting color 
the saturation and the lightness which if you think about it colorize can do all that too it's just you know it starts you off at a different color hue saturation allows you to edit the color that you have colorize just you know it changes the entire color format I don't want that changes what was once gray to really 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 blinding blue it's like oof no thanks anyway so from here on you can have well you can really make two moves well actually you can make whatever move you want ignore me but <laughs> don't follow my footsteps I'm not great I'm not even great at explaining things I'm probably just confusing everybody but anyway you can either map out the rest of the colors for his outfit or you can use your new lines of hair to color the skin which by the way I recommend you lock for those who don't know locking a layer means that whatever color you have on that layer no matter what you do as long as it's locked you cannot draw off the edge of whatever colors on there I said undo oh you're gonna do that oh this is screwing up screwy 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 anyway it looks like it's gonna be giving me trouble wonderful so I gotta redo that and then I also have to get rid of this little wonderful I gotta tell you that wasn't that fun anyway so yeah locking a layer once you're done creating the edges is always a good idea so now we had this color to start with but keeping in mind that his skin will get darker and that there is Sun not just any Sun but sunset light on it you probably want to go in a more orange direction but still not too orange or it's like way up here like a scarf just you want to start there and maybe go up diagonally until you hit that sort of area and then map out the shadow colors this place this area right here the side of his face that's farthest away from the light and also um, right here where his hair curves in will probably be the darkest places on his skin now I would suggest making a bigger brush than needed lowering the opacity to about 25 26 and just lightly drawing the big shades like the places that are gonna be farther away As you can see, it is already looking better. Now, you still have a darker way to go. So, do those places now that are going to be most shadowed by the light, which are right here where his eye is, you know, inside of it curving inside of his head and the nose is coming down right here too we'll have a bigger um, shadow space than right here because the nose is narrow at this point but the sinus cavities are right about here and they are wide so it will also curve around here where his nostrils curve you can draw a little 
well, I don't know what it's called, but that place where on your skin where it sort of creates the bow of your lips. Um, maybe a slight shadowing here because there is an indent in the skin right there where your nose, where your face curves into your nose. Uh, up here where another eye curves in, over here where the brow is hidden. Definitely all the way over here where the face is. The lips protrude out, so there will be a shadow here. There will be a shadow here too, but that's going to be whiter, so. As you can see, we're mapping out some colors. Now, now we want it really darker, but, you know, we can continue on down this path and do that, but we also risk doing this to our picture. Okay, maybe not that, but do you see this color? It's not a disgusting color, but it sends his face in the wrong direction. Well, I would suggest, I don't know if we're here yet, I can pick a different color, but it's changing the brush mode to grain merge, lowering it to about 20, making it a bit bigger. Oh, not doing that, sorry. Changing the color to black. And then coloring where he will be most shaded. Be careful with this tool because it is extreme, but it is a good way to color shadows without creating this entire burned problem that I used to have. It is a good way around that. Especially if you're not too sure what sort of colors you should use. Like if you're not really good at color mapping and you don't have like SAI or something to help you out, it's really good to have some sort of way around that. As you can see, he's looking kind of scary right now, what with the lack of eye whites. I would now take the smudge brush still at 20% and smudge those colors so they make them look less like a Frankenstein. Okay, as you can see right now, this face is pretty much shaded. Now, what I was just doing next is creating a layer over skin called whites, not white, whites, and doing those colors. Well, actually, not quite even that color. Eyes aren't pure white. They're more sort of a gray when it comes to coloring. A light gray, but still gray. <laughs> I don't know why I like doing that gray. Change your mode back to normal. And color in your eye whites. Also, while you're here, might be a good idea do the teeth. As you can see, that was a creative license because his mouth in this one is, uh-oh, excuse me, um, his mouth is closed here, but I thought it was more threatening if it was like, his mouth was a little bit open, just sort of like, ooh, I'm gonna get you good. Anyway, so now what I think you should do is Select the sketch layer and hide that layer. As you can see, we still need some of those lines. You can't really make out his nose and quite frankly, his eyes look scary and his mouth, you know, obviously still needs that. So what you probably want to do is go back down to skin, select by whatever color is darkest and outline the remaining lines. Not 
you know, like a line art or something, but just so that when we delete it, which we're about to, you still know where that stuff is supposed to go. And then erase the sketch layer. Just get rid of it. Or rather, get rid of the nose part of the sketch layer, excuse me. I want to lock the sketch layer and color the lips in that same color so it starts looking more like its face. Maybe you could burn that a little bit. I know a lot of people say a lot of bad things about the burn tool, but it does help. Alright, I think what will help his face to not look so scary is to create a new layer over skin. Call it scarf. And as you can see, I do not like the color of that scarf. Well, okay, you can't see, but as you can see, it's very harsh value. So I'm just going to bring it up here a little bit, recolor the scarf. I'm not even going to bother to color inside the lines right now, just to make sure that the entire scarf body has been filled in because you do not want to you know lock the layer just to find out that you have something like this this right here you want the entire thing to be blocked out all right lock that for right now and then you can follow these lines or you can do your own, but you want a darker color that still sort of keeps the value of the color I chose. Or you can choose your own, obviously. I don't, I shouldn't keep saying that, but, and then draw the curves of the scarf because it is not just one thing, it is sort of like a multi-layered scarf. It's very um I don't even know the word. But anyway. And keep in mind that the scarf has just been blasted through a building. So it's not going to be you know, like a fashion statement or something. It's going to be like a holy crap, what happened to you thing. And then I might want to draw some of this. Anyway, once you have that done, you can get rid of that part of the scarf if you want. Not the ties in the back, though. Oops, I keep forgetting about the ties. Take your own advice, Aura. As you can see, have a pretty good setup. And as of right now, I'm going to bring up the background. As you can see, the background is the exact same size as the picture I'm working from. I like things to be the same size. That'll be put on top of everything. You want to move it behind everything. As you can see, it's still not perfect, but it's looking better. Now, back on the scarf layer, Something I did with my picture. This is what my pic my finished pic my finished picture looks like without any sort of sun on top of it. Blue eyes, dirt marks, you know, everything. Hey, I didn't say click out. Bring it back up. Anyway, as you can see, hair curves around his face, all of that good happy stuff. But I drew on the scarf golden light. 
you don't have to do that but I liked the way it looked so I'm going to change it to yeah, sort of really it's the only color I used that was of a harsh value use that and then try and determine the places that would be most hit by our sun. It would probably be just like that. Now, as you can see, this isn't exactly shaded. So, back to black, back to grain merge, and back to 24% this time. But that scarf is looking a, ye a little yellow before I make any sort of alterations. So back to hue saturation. Change it this way. No, that's too yellow. Back this way. Yeah, that's turning a little bit pink, but darken it. Ooh, too dark. Saturation. Yeah, maybe a little less. Yeah, sort of like that. See, much better because color eyes would have done this. Does it look like he has a blue scarf? Nope. Anyway, grain merge. His hair will be blocked from the sun over here by his hair. I mean, his scarf will be blocked over here from the sun by his hair. Over here. It will also be blocked by the hair and the fact that this part is away from the sun. This part curves under. This part curves into the rest of the scarf. This part is in between. This part curves under, curves under, curves under, curves under. It's blocked. Curves under, curves under under, curves under. Just continue to do that. And then once you have that, change to your smudge tool or whatever equivalent you have and start to soften those lines. Because it's not going to be perfect, especially since, as I said, he was just blasted through a building. Now, get rid of the edges you don't need. And then, I'm not going to do this for the whole scarf, but as you can see, the scarf is ripped. Now, you can do it whatever way you want, but I changed the rate up, the smudge tool, rate up to about 60, lower it to be kind of small actually, and unlock the layer, and then just start somewhere and start pulling. If that comes out like that, then this can come out like that, but it looks a little weird, so you might want to pull something else down, pull it back out, make a branch off of that one, pull it back out, make it a little bit bigger, pull them all out, you know, just sort of start creating rips. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be anything, really. You just gotta start doing that. And now I didn't do this in my picture, but if you want to rip like up here and everything to help show that he's just bla been blasted through a building, by all means, feel free to add as much detail as you want. But see, as you can see, it's starting to look a lot more ripped, and that'll look a lot better in the long run. Now his shirt. This is my finished one. It has two rips. I actually forgot to smudge that. My bad. Ooh, I forgot to do that too. 
Whoopsies. But um, his shirt has some rips. His shirt has some dirt. Now for the dirt. This is a, okay, change back to normal, not gr grain merge. Uh, this is a GIMP tool. I don't know if you have an equivalent on whatever program you're using, but you can get free brushes almost anywhere. And I would suggest a grunge brush if you don't have this, but I like the chalk brush. You name a layer dirt, change it to something sort of dirt colored, but not too harsh, maybe some sort of gray. And you know what? his skin color is kind of bothering me, so I'm gonna do that right now. We'll work on it. That's a little better. A little. Anyway, back to the dirt. Take a medium sized brush. I wouldn't have it at a hundred percent opacity, but um, on his face, he has markings around this cheek. He has a big sort of mark on this cheek and he's got some marks on his forehead. So you don't have to do exact, but I prefer to do it somewhat similar. You want to draw some sort of markings. They're not, oh, I want to do it under, under the hair. You know, they're not going to be perfect. You can go a little darker if you want. But just so that it looks like he actually has some smudges. We're going to come back later with a different brush and work on it, but... And see, now he's dirty. Isn't he happy? You can just go ahead and draw all the dirt spots right now if you want, but... I recommend the chalk brush. Well, one of them, because honestly, there's a couple. Just because it's got that sort of grungy feel and it's not precise and everything. But, yep, yeah, you can just do that everywhere. And then, you want to smudge it again. And I would suggest using a different sort of chalk brush. Don't use the same one, but change it down to maybe, change the smudge down to maybe 20. And just sort of, you know, smear it. Because dirt ain't perfectly situated. Smudge, 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 smudge. I did less smudging on these because honestly the dirt and the cloth it would be different than the dirt in the face anyway that's just sort of a rough idea how to do it now as I said before I'm not gonna do a complete tutorial and you know do it to the extent that I did this one but let's focus right now on his face as you can see, I have a lot of highlights in the hair. Now, this may look difficult at first, depending on how experienced you are, but trust me, once you get the hang of it, it's really not that hard. It's actually deceptively simple. It just doesn't look that hard. I mean, it just looks really hard. So, make a new layer above the hair. You can call it hair too. You can call it hair shines. You can call it whatever you want. Oh, why do I keep telling people they can do whatever they want? You know you can do whatever you want. Sorry. Um, change back to a soft brush. Put it at 100% opacity. And choose a nice golden tone for the hair. 
we don't want to make it dark to start out with but his hair pulls up here the hair hits it I mean the light hits it here and don't forget that the uh, the light would hit it here too and also because the light you know doesn't just end here at his head the light would curve around the head and back over here this part will be light too and the ends of his hair will probably be lighter too because they are just hanging there absorbing the light they don't have a curtain to hide them for the light and I'm gonna make a new layer to combat that I didn't have to do that but I did anyway and just sort of start out farther away and just sort of draw the pa draw a few pads of hair. Try to keep it, you know, going with the flow. It doesn't have to be perfect. When you start getting to different edges, I would suggest zooming in and drawing those out slow well not slowly but lightly uh, you can just do that for the brighter parts you can use a lighter color or you can use the dodge tool I wouldn't suggest it but you can and then you know once you've got a few of those, basically what you do is you smudge again. Just make it a nice big, bigger brush and just pull. I'm at 20% right now, but I wouldn't suggest going over 30, but you don't have to use 20. And it just sort of creates a nice sort of blended feel. I would try and keep your hands straight. I mean, not straight, but, you know, try and draw, you know, with the curve. Otherwise, it might end up looking like this. And, you know, that's not something you want to do. Wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. But, you know, just do that. That's basically what it is. Drawing lines and smudging them. See? Super lazy and deceptively simple. Now, if it gets to the point where the stuff starts to look too smudged, you can always zoom back in and draw a smaller line over it so that it doesn't look too smudged. As you can see, I'm doing a terrible job. Well, not terrible, but just not great. And, you know, you just, you do that. You just continue to do that until your hair looks better. Now as for the lips, back to the sketch layer where the lips are still chilling. I would suggest erasing as much of it as you can, accounting for the bow, without actually losing what it is that you're doing and then more smudging. That's basically all my pictures are. A bunch of smudges. Erase the whites behind them that are coming out from behind. And if you want to blend that even further, you can cut it out and paste it into the skin layer. And then just smudge like a happy camper. I would recommend drawing a darker corner at the mouth. Because it does curve in. I don't know about that dark, but as you can see, it's starting to look more normal. There's still something wrong with his face. I wonder if it's all the bright, bright eyelashes and stuff. Anyway. So 
got the irises. Move that down there. Okay. Whites now. I would suggest the grain merge tool for this again, using pure black or whatever color you want. Don't darken it too much except for at the edges because the eye is, you know, whitish. It just comes out looking a little gray. Uh, to darken that one spot. Smudge towards the corner, smudge towards the corner. Great. Try to work on that stupid nose. Ah! Zoomed out. Just want to follow the curves. mudge around the edges and it should be all right. Now lips are a different color than the rest of the skin. I don't know how far you want to take this, but if you want, you can just, no, that's grain merge. I wondered if it would look all right, but it doesn't you go back to normal mode. You can just recolor them a bit. Of course, if you do that, you're going to want to add a little bit of shine to it because it does get hit by the sun too. And even boys lips shine a little bit. Ooh, I forgot to mention you're probably going to want to, um, grain merge his lips too. Go back to do that. Cause his eyes are not going to be shine. I mean, his teeth are not going to be shining. Oops. That white out of the darkness of his mouth. Anyway, there's that. And, you know, I could show you how to do all of the clothes, but basically it's just the same. Make a layer under um, the scarf. His t-shirt is pure black. So you just gotta map that out. And basically lather, rinse, and repeat. Just, uh, you know, select a color, lighten the edges. Same thing as the scarf. Select a color to lighten the edges. Something that would look good in the sun. I would always suggest tinting with gold if it's not looking like it's out in the sun. Just lower the opacity and just draw. Okay, not that much gold, but just some gold to look like it's sitting in the sun. And then, you know, just smudge the edges again to look like rips. Get rid of the uh, sketch layer if it's throwing you off. Just smudge, smudge, smudge. Create the rips. 
same thing. When you're done with that, you know, depending on how far you want to go. Don't forget, he's got some holes. Just do the rip those from the inside out. But um, then you can do the same thing for a sweater underneath that. I'm not going to do that because, you know, kind of get it by now. And, okay, his neck really quick. You know, select that color and since it's so deep under there, just lock that layer and just mark it. Now if it's not looking exactly like the color you have, that's okay. You might want to make it a little bit closer to the other skin colors, but you know, no coloring is perfect. And then once you're done with the neck, unlock the skin layer above it and smooth out your edges. I'm going to put it at 32. It's a bit high than I normally do, but a hey, scarf, you're interfering. There we go. Oops, just erase the scarf. My bad. You just want to make sure that the line is smooth before you do anything else with it. So yeah, pretty much that's what goes into it, except for the eyes. I think the eyes will be one of the last things I do, so let's do them now. Uh, you can get rid of the sketch layer, well, you can get rid of the parts that you're not using anyway. Now, something you should remember is that even males have lashes, those corners of their eyes, and water lines. So back on your skin layer, select a color that's close to white, and considering there's a light shining on them, the water line will light up a little bit. So just draw a little bit of white. Just a little, and then you can use a darker color to mark the rest of the place, the rest of the area around it, just creating the water line because they do have them. Anyway, and then on that same thing, on that same skin layer, you probably want to color the corners. You can do another layer to do this if you want, but. I just like to do it on skin. Um, those things at the corner of your eye, they have a shine to them. Just not too bright and not to uh, put too fine of a point on it, but they do. And then on the white layer where your eyeballs are sitting, Just sort of smudge that in here and out here a little bit because they do sort of fade in to each other. And then you can just darken down here. And that's pretty much it for the corner of the eye, for me anyway. Is that too dark? Yeah, a little bit. Anyway, back to the lashes. The lashes are in the sunlight, so they are going to light up a little bit. There it is, I put the lashes. Okay. You could probably just use the same color that you did for right here to do it, but 
the, the lashes that hit the sun are going to light up just a little bit. You don't have to make it too pronounced. You don't have to, uh, you know, just make him look like a girl. But there is some highlight and action going on there. Sorry if you hear some noises in the background. That's with the tablet and little bratty kids that live around here. Their parents don't watch them, so I get to listen to them. It's wonderful. Anyway, so you basically just want to do that, and when you're done, just smudge so it's not too pronounced. That's the whole point of this. Everything's so soft. Now, as for the sketch layer, you still need the brows. So, I'm just going to cut out whatever's left here. And then, you know, just continue your little smudging, uh, raise on the jar, whatever you call it. And it'll end up looking okay. Like, obviously, I'm not gonna, like, obviously I didn't go as deep into it as I did here. As you can see, it's a lot more shaded, the waterline's more pronounced. But, you know, just to give you the general idea of what direction to go in. Now his eyes. Well, actually, let's do his brows first. Alright, on the sketch layer, you can just cut out the brows and put it on a different layer if you want by now. But I'm just going to leave them here because I'm almost done with this tutorial. You can just shape the eyebrows if you want. Or, if you want to go even more realistic, you can leave them like this. Or, if you want to take a step further into semi-realism, or just plain realism, you can draw out some of the hairs. And smudge those along. You know, just roll with it. I'm making them look a little bit too furry, but anyway, there's any sort of combination to ways you can make his eyebrows look. That's a little bit furry, but hey, he did just get blasted through a building. You never know. Anyway, you can do that for both of the brows, and you can just do it whatever way you want. But the eyes. Lock that layer. Now, there's also any sort of combination to ways you can do the eyes, but what I like to do is take a darker color around the rims, pull that color over here for where the eye goes back into the head. Huh, I wonder where that really bright blue color on there came from. And color that space around the pupil a little bit and then draw a few lines here take a highlighting color run it around the edge in between the center lines and the outer lines burn just a little bit dodge just a little bit dodge a little bit more just around the rim and then how's that looking 
much better. So basically you can do any sort of level you want of definition or you know realism but basically that's what it is draw smudge draw smudge draw smudge and then when you're done let me bring up my original project file to do this because yeah it's got everything else but yeah okay as you can see when I was done I had 15 layers I had the sunshine which was a lot more uh, what do you call that present maybe than the other one as you can see you can duplicate the layer if you want to create more of a light but you know, whatever way you want. I have the sunshine layer, which as you can see, the colors are a lot more vibrant without it, but I like sunlight. I had the red ribbon stitch, which is basically just a drawing of a ribbon with an R and an R on it, which by the way, if you want to do for yourself, uh, Ah, give it here. Just draw a little ribbon. And you can smudge the edges when you're ready. I'm just going to do this really roughly. But you'll notice that the shirt is curving under here. You know, this part's the darkest, this part's coming up. What I would suggest doing is auto-cropping that layer so you just have the red ribbon space when you're all done smudging, after all. And bring up distorts and eye warp. Eye warp is a handy little tool, let me tell you. You want to lower the deform amount to maybe 10, 9 or 10, and maybe raise the deform radius to about 39 maybe. I'm going to push in here at the edge. I'm going to push down here. I'm going to push in at the bottom a little bit more. I'm going to crush here a bit more. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to push that in, pull out and just hey and as you can see it's not perfect but it will get the job done you need a little bit of practice and all with the eye warp tool but I did use it a lot for my Elsa project and especially on her um, bodice because I had trouble drawing the, oh, what do you call those? Well, like the sparkles and stuff, the exact same way her body was. It was just a lot easier to use the eye warp tool. But, uh, yeah, so you just do that in your shade and just like everything else. I had the sunshine layer, the red, rib the red ribbon layer, the hair layer. As you can see, without the hair, it doesn't look that great. Or, you know, it doesn't look great to begin with, but... Um, as you can see, you can see all the stuff that I left behind it. The brows have their own layer. I don't actually like the way the brows turned out. I wish I had, like, not made them that round. Ooh. Scary. Maybe something more like that. I don't know. Uh, I had the face lines, which was just what I called the irises. I had my shines, which include the waterline shines and the actual eye shines. The irises, which as you can see, are pretty much exactly what I showed you in the other one. You know, 
dark up here, dark around the rim, dark middle lines, and everything else. Uh, I had the dirt and the eye corners on the same level. As you can see, I went through and drew dirt everywhere using the method that I showed you. The scarf. Um, the whites, which are here. can't believe I didn't auto-crop that layer. That's weird. Hey, that doesn't actually look that bad. Hmm. Anyway. A skin layer. Ooh, terrifying. But shirt layer. Sweater layer. Odds and ends, which are a part of the shirt that I missed here and the um, back of the scarf, including the ties. And then the background. As you can see, the background here is blurred. I thought it gave it a much more, you know, it really focused on 17 more. And when I was done for my version on DA, image merge visible layers, I did that. I hid the background and the sunshine first. And then for that, I used the blur tool, where is it? There it is, with a rounded edge and at about 88%. Just blurred 17's edges a little bit to put more of a dramatic focus on his face. Because I'm really happy with the way his face turned out. Anyway, so yeah, that's basically what you do. And then if you don't know how to blur, there are very many tutorials to help you. I can't believe I practically just redrew this picture again. That's crazy. But, um, yeah, I'm blur. There are all sorts of blurs you can use. Blur, Gaussian blur, motion blur. Honestly, I don't really know the difference between them, but, you know, you can just do whatever you want. Like, I wonder what would happen if you blurred it some more, but you changed the angle to be, you know, heading downward. I wonder if that would look cool. Hey, bring it back up. Gotta wait for it to load. Hey, that looks It doesn't look that good. Anyway, so basically, you have the basics. You know what to do. If you'd like to see anything more from me, you can just say so and, you know, I might do more. Honestly, I don't know how the quality of this is going to turn out. I'll probably upload it anyway, but I don't know if it's conducive for future videos. But anyway, thank you very much for watching.